And so my goal is to get your pantry filled with herbal condiments that that make every meal a little bit better. And truly it's, you know, it's the best health care prevention around is what you've got in your kitchen and what you put on your food. You know, an herbal lifestyle is, um, you know, good as a health care plan as anything really that we can do to support our health. Hey friends, welcome to the Medicine Stories podcast, where we are remembering what it is to be human upon the earth. This is episode 39, and I am Amber Magnolia Hill, and today we are talking again to Cammie McBride, who was my guest on episode 20, and you all loved her just as much as I love her. It's really exciting having her back. Cammie's book, The Herbal Kitchen, is uh, having its 10th anniversary right now and is being reissued in a brand new format with more recipes, more photos. And so I asked her to come back and talk to me about kitchen herbalism. I really love that Cammie's focus and what she taught me in my year-long apprenticeship with her uh, in 2007 is on home herbalism. I feel like we have a tendency to really overcomplicate herbalism for people who are new, just feeling called to learn more about working with plants. It can just seem so overwhelming. Like, where do you even begin and how on earth are you ever going to know everything? Of course, you're not, uh, which Cammie and I talked about in that first interview. But starting with simple kitchen herbalism just makes so much sense. And I can't overemphasize the word simple. This is easy. This is preparing simple sprinkles, salts, vinegars, oils, honeys, ghees, etc. Um, to just sprinkle on your cooking. And even if, like me, you're not some epic cook, you're still probably making, you know, rice every now and then that you can put these delicious and super nutritious um, kitchen magic concoctions onto. Or, you know, what, whatever it is you're eating, you can majorly up your nutrient intake, your medicine intake by adding these condiments into your meals. Um, you know, cutting way, way down on illnesses, any sort of infectious disease, cutting down on inflammation, and really, really benefiting the digestive system, which is everything. So before I say more, let me tell you exactly what we talk about, because I think I'm going to repeat myself a lot if I don't. Um, how simple kitchen herbalism is and how it bypasses the overwhelm that so many herbalists feel, new herbalists and experienced herbalists, uh, how culture and health begin in the kitchen, empowering yourself to take care of everyday illnesses and ailments at home. I wasn't exaggerating when I told Cammie that I've been able to take care of every single illness my children have had at home for the last 12 years. Um, that feels really good. And I'm not anti-doctors, I'm not anti-modern medicine, but if there's something in my kitchen that can relieve the symptoms or help move the illness out of the body faster, help heal the injury, then I'm going to do that. Well, now that I say that, I am remembering Cami taught us back in the day to put cayenne powder on a cut but it's a hemostat and stops bleeding, um, much like yarrow. But if you're working in the kitchen, you might not have powdered yarrow or fresh yarrow around, but you probably have cayenne pepper. And um, I've done that before, and it works. So we talk about how Cami has set up her kitchen so that incorporating healing herbs into every meal just takes no thought. Um, the magic that happens when women gather to make food and medicine together with our unique lineages of women standing behind us, how herbal sprinkles alone can change the whole food culture in a home. Um, you know, we talk about the fact that no one eats perfectly healthy at every meal. You're going to have takeout. You're going to have processed food. You're going to just have crap sometimes. <laughs> I know I do. But adding these, again, herbal salts, vinegars, oils, honeys, etc. to each dish automatically and like dramatically boosts the nutritional and flavor content. 
Kitchen herbalism returns a vast diversity of missing micronutrients into the standard American diet. Digestion is literally the foundation of health, and an herbally oriented kitchen supports the flow of blood, energy, and oxygen to your digestive tract at every meal. Evolving our medical care to the next level begins at home. Uh, pesto is as sacred as the elements and is incredible for fighting colds and flu and has endless possibilities beyond basil, which we talk about some of Cammie's favorites. Reawakening our senses and activating ancestral taste and scent perception. Why you need the bitter flavor in your life. Alchemy oil, chai honey, and mind-blowing herbal cordials. Um, the best herbal food gifts to give for every occasion. And what I'm thinking of as mega next level meal planning. Just taking 15 minutes a week to ask yourself what's going on with you and the people you live with health-wise this week. What's going on um, in the environment outside? What season is it? Is this going to be a really stressful week? Is the flu going around? And then planning your meals for that week um, around the herbal condiments that you can use to boost everyone's health. I just think it's such a brilliant idea. As I tell Cami, I kind of got into meal planning last year thinking it was a waste of time, <laughs> you know, wasn't going to work out, but it's really been great for our family. Um, we now only go to the grocery store once a week. We really, really try to stick to it and it's just made everything so much better, but Cami's idea of incorporating um, this extra thought process of what's going on for us right now into your meal planning, I just think is so amazing. I just, uh, like I say, I admire her so much and would really like to be, you know, that person, that mom who's, who's doing that as well every week. So Cami's book, the 10th anniversary, brand new edition, um, is available now for pre-order and like I don't like to be pushy about trying to sell things on this podcast I almost never even talk about my herbal medicines that I make but you want this book you want this book um I did a giveaway for this book when Cammie was on episode 20 and people were just commenting how much they loved it a lot of people went out and bought it you know when they didn't win the giveaway because only three people could especially after you hear this um, interview, I'm just like positive <laughs> that you will know that this is worth your money and time to have these super simple recipes and recipe templates on your bookshelf at all times. And as Cami talks about, um, pre-orders are super duper important to the success of a book. And this book is already pretty successful. Um, it's been in print for 10 years and they decided to give it a second run and boost some new life into it because they know it's going to continue to sell. But it can really help any author out or really help Cami out if she can sell a ton of them in this pre-order period. So in order to entice you all to pre-order the book, she has made two awesome bonuses. And if you have ever taken any of Cammie's free or paid courses online, watched any of her videos, listened to her speak, you know that she is just a wealth of knowledge. Um, man, everything I tune into her doing, I'm like taking notes, learning so much. My husband recently listened to her talk about, um, with a friend about planting elder trees and using elder medicine. And he was like, Cami is so amazing. And I was like, I know this is what I'm saying. Like, how lucky am I that Cami was my first herb teacher? And I'm just so happy that she's putting stuff online now and that I can share it with you. So the first bonus that you get if you pre-order the herbal kitchen is an ebook called Pesto for Every Season. Um, Pesto is the besto, and I'm just really stoked to get my hands on this ebook and read all of Cami's ridiculously, amazingly delicious recipes for pesto that she has created since the publication of the first edition of the book. And then she has a video course called the Turmeric Sessions, which busts turmeric myths and in which Cami shares what she has learned about how to not 
use turmeric in like over 30 years of working with people. So as I've talked about before on the show, turmeric is, you know, one of those like hot herbs. Everyone knows it. Everyone knows about turmeric and everyone knows it's anti-inflammatory. So um, take the capsules or whatever to deal with all your problems and your pain and your issues. And it is like every other herb more complex than that, um, as it again, always is. So I think it's super valuable that Cami decided to like cut through some of the misunderstandings around turmeric and to do it in video form. Um, so the link to pre-order Cami's book will of course be in the show notes. I'll probably put it right in the intro there. So it's super easy for you to find. And, um, I hope you check it out. And there is not a Patreon offering to go along with this because Cami is an incredible book and those two free offers are all you need. But thank you so much to the Patreon subscribers. I'm going to come back at you with some awesome stuff in upcoming episodes. So thanks so much for listening. I just know you're going to love this interview. Please, please share with me and or Cami. Um, how it inspires you and like share photos of your, what you make, the foods you make or the herbs you're inclined to grow after this, you know, Um, let's bring health and empowerment around wellness back into the home, back into the kitchen. It is so needed. And again, it's so, so simple. So, okay, let's get into the interview now with Cammie McBride. Okay. Hi, Cammie. Welcome back. Hey, Amber. I'm so grateful to be spending this time with you. As am I. And there has been high demand for your return on this show. So (laughs) there's going to be a lot of gratitude out there. (laughs) Aw, good. (laughs) So we talked about a lot last time. And I would encourage anybody listening to go back to that episode if you haven't heard it yet. I think it was number 20 um, with Cammie. But today we're going to really focus specifically on kitchen herbalism. And I love that you have this focus because I think especially for newcomers onto the plant path, it can seem really overwhelming. Like, do I have to know all these herbs and how to use them and how to formulate and how to know which ailment to use what for? But herbalism is so much simpler than that. It can be so much simpler than that. And actually, we all work with herbs more or less, if we were spending any time in the kitchen, um, every day in the kitchen without even realizing the medicinal value of what we're doing. That is so true. That is so true. And you are so right about <clears throat> onboarding into the herbal world. That's the biggest problem is that people are experiencing overwhelm and confusion. And, you know, I've been teaching herbal medicine for over 30 years now, and there's a lot of things that I could be focusing on, but I have chosen for a while now to focus on kitchen herbalism because it is, it is the easiest way in. Anybody can do it. You can do it at any, you know, we have to eat. And so you're already doing something that you can just do the herbal add on. And it's, you know, it's, it's just something, you know, culture begins in the kitchen. And so you're already in the kitchen, you're already feeding and nurturing your family. And, you know, especially, especially when you, you know, when you have kids, when you're a mom, as you know, (laughs) or if you're, you know, we're busy, people are busy and it's really hard to, you know, some of us are cut out to like, you know, do years of study, you know, and that's awesome, but we need everybody on board and kitchen herbalism is the way to really get into it without having to go through a whole huge course or, you know, take it on as a a master's degree, right. Or I don't have to go back to school. You just, you know, and especially with, um, you know, when we have kids, it's like what's expected of us to, you know, be able to take care of our children to prevent them from getting illness. I mean, it's a tall order if you're not really uh, already on the herbal, you know, herbal train. It's, it takes a lot of bandwidth to learn. And, <clears throat> you know, kitchen herbalism is it just cuts, it cuts through all of that. It cuts through the busyness, the overwhelm, and it gets you started. It's something that you can get started with today, right now, right away, and have a massive influence on the nutrition and the care of of yourself and the people around you. Absolutely. It's so simple. And, 
you can buy these herbs at the grocery store, but they're also some of the easiest to grow, you know, right in your kitchen window or just outside your door. Um, and yeah, speaking of motherhood, when you said that, it just made me think that I have been able to take care of every single <laughs> ailment for 12 and a half years now as a mother that my children have had at home because I was empowered because I did your apprenticeship when my oldest was a baby and I learned the simplest things, these things that my grandmothers knew, you know, that most generations before ours knew how to do. It's not rocket science. It's really simple and delicious and nourishing and fun. It's enjoyable. I remember you saying, Cammie, that women are meant to gather together and make food and medicine for their loved ones. And man, I have found that to be so true. We love doing that. We love doing that. I think it really flows through our blood. We just need to get back into the kitchen with those herbs and start. You know, what, what you just said um, made me think of something and I want to, I'm going to just go ahead and talk about it. And that is, you know, this, this book has 250 recipes in it. <laughs> I mean, who writes a book with 250 recipes, right? <laughs> um, but there is actually something surprisingly special about the recipes in the Herbal Kitchen that I don't think you're going to find in any recipe book. And so the thing is, is, I didn't decide to write this book and then create the recipes because most books are actually created that way. You know, you go, I'm, oh, I got a book deal. Now I got to curate the recipes and gather the recipes. Nope, that's not what happened here. <laughs> The Herbal Kitchen was written, my book, The Herbal Kitchen, was written based on the recipes that were developed in my classes. So the, the recipes wrote the book. So here's what happened. 15 years of teaching my year-long mentorship, we, you know, the guidance was we gathered together, we listened to the plants, and were inspired to make the healing medicines that the people need. And you were part of that. You were part of that 15-year period. 500 women passed through my course during that period when these recipes for the Herbal Kitchen were being developed. And, you know, like you said, there's just, there's just something magical <laughs> that happens when we sit together chopping the roots and sifting the seeds and mixing the herbs. You know, we relax more. We laugh more. And suddenly we go into that part of our brain that solves problems, you know, our, our, our minds let go. And we stop, we stop trying to hold on to like, oh my gosh, what good, what good, what herb is good for this? And what herb, da, 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 da. And then what happens is that the body memory kicks in. And, you know, this was such a surprise to me. I didn't learn this in herb school. And I just started noticing it at, over and over after class, the lineage, the heritage, you know, the thousands of years of making medicine together in a group, um, the body remembers, you know, the brain, the brain keeps saying, what, what's this good for? But then when the brain takes a break and the body remembers, we just all of a sudden go, hey, let's try this. And so the best recipes are made that way. And so the recipes in, in the herbal kitchen were created out of this inspirational medicine making spark that happens when you make medicine a group that's focused on, on healing together. And it's nothing that I could have ever done on my own. Um, you know, but we just kept coming up with great recipes and kept, you know, there are actually way more than 250 recipes, but these are the ones that people had the best success for with. And, you know, and so every single woman, including you <laughs> has your heart and hand in the refining and perfecting of these recipes that are, that have one goal. And that is to activate kitchen herbalism. So that's, I don't know. I, I just feel like it's magical. <laughs> it really is. And then I think too of like the lineage of women standing behind all of those 500 women. Oh. Like that's, this is a powerful book. <laughs> I love that image. Thank you for that. Oh my gosh. I just got chills. I did too <laughs> when you were speaking. Um, and you know, you kind of, let me, here in the intro, I had um, underlined this probably years ago. You wrote, many family home medicine lineages in the Western world were lost in the last several generations. We were mesmerized by the novelty and scientifically proven superiority of synthetic food and modern medicine. We cast our grandmother's teas and herbal powders to the wind. I have often wondered how it must feel to a grandmother when her clan dismisses her ancient wisdom as an old wives' tale. 
This loss of ancestral food and medicine literacy is nothing short of tragic. Mm-hmm. That's so true. I feel that I, 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 I feel that in my bones, like what it must have been like to have the knowledge and then just everybody just throwing it out the window, you know, and then here we are. It's just, um, and, and it's, it's why we are, we have a medicine, you know, it's one of the reasons why we have a medical system that we have is because we're susceptible and vulnerable and we've lost our, we've lost our, our literacy and heritage. Mm-hmm. And we've lost our health because we've been eating that way. We've been eating the processed foods and, um, and not using our senses. You know, when you're talking about how these recipes were developed, I'm really thinking about, what a like sensual experience that is. And again, like you said, moving out of that certain mindset and into a more relaxed and open space where true learning happens, where true healing happens, and where we're just alive and joyful. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that, that, it, that's the fuel for this, right? That's where the herbal kitchen it comes alive. And you know, I mean, really, I mean, it, it's it, maybe it might seem like a stretch that, you know, what you the herbs you use in your food in your kitchen can ultimately affect how medicine is practiced in this country. But I mean, it's already happening. It's just about the critical mass of enough people being literate in holistic health and the value of using kitchen remedies that that's what's pushing the medical system to change. That's why medical doctors now are, are prescribing ginger for chemotherapy side effects. It's, it's a bottom up process and, you know, we all have to get smarter and, you know, if we're going to shift our antiquated medical system and, you know, or, or what are we going to do, you know, follow the doctor's advice and take Tylenol. Right. And so, I mean, this is really the impetus uh, the big reason why I wrote this book, why I focused on urgent herbal kitchen um, medicine is because I, my deepest desire is that everybody can start practicing medicine, <laughs> kitchen medicine, mm-hmm. <laughs> herbal mm-hmm. kitchen medicine, right? Mm-hmm. And it's, it's a, it's a movement. And the more we bring the herbs into, you know, you just don't underestimate the power of getting those herb herbal sprinkles on your table because it's, you know, 10 years ago, it was a desert. No, nobody had even really heard of elderberry syrup. Now it's gaining traction, you know, the home herbalist movement. And in 10 years from now, you know, making elderberry syrup is going to be kind of like making chicken soup. And it's and it's a, a bottom up process. And it happens in it starts in every kitchen with every meal and anybody can do it. <laughs> Oh, it's so exciting to think about there being, uh, you know, a revolution, a true food revolution um, of just people cooking at home and knowing how to take care of common ailments with everyday plants and herbs. It's just, it's so simple. It's so funny that we talk about it as if, as if it would be a revolution, but it would be because of where we've gotten in the culture, but I just can't emphasize enough how easy it is. And I have to admit that I'm not much of a cook. Um, I don't love being in the kitchen. I'm just always, I'm like, I'd rather be reading a book or writing something or podcasting. Or, you know, um, Like I really admire people who just love the process of being in the kitchen. But every time I pick up your book, I am so inspired to make something. And these recipes are simple. They are so easy to understand and to use. And like, I'm looking at, um, a drink recipe right now. And I love when you have, you have a little like intro into most of these recipes. And so this is for lemon verbena nectar. And first, I just want to read these ingredients if I may, because just to show people how simple it is, a cup of lemon verbena tea, one of my favorite herbs ever, a tablespoon of ginger honey, which you have that recipe on another page, incredibly easy to make, a cup of frozen blueberries and a handful of fresh lemon balm. Couldn't be easier blend together. So you have written my five-year-old son who's 14 now. Yeah. <laughs> he is. I was pounding out this book when he was a ta- you know. That's crazy. <laughs> I know. I'm telling you, it wrote me. I didn't write it. <laughs> <laughs> but you wrote my five-year-old son created this recipe. He is definitely a smoothie kid. I have a lazy Susan with several herbal honeys and herbal sprinkles, si- sprinkles mm-hmm. sitting by the blender. 
He uses whatever tea I have left over from the morning, a mix and match of honey and sprinkles, and his favorite fruit, blueberries. He calls all of the smoothies green drinks, even though this one is blue. Um, so there's like little tips like that. Having a lazy Susan with several different herbal honeys and sprinkles sitting by the blender. And I remember you saying, I think too, that you have... Okay, I want to ask you how your kitchen is set up. Um, I picture there just being bottles of homemade herbal things everywhere that you can just throw a dash here and there while you're creating food. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I have a, I have a lazy Susan on the table that has the herbal sprinkles and you know, the, I mean, I have to say that the, those simple little herbal sprinkles have, ha, are the thing that I've gotten the number one most feedback from as like the key log for a family because they're on the table and the kids like to mix the sprinkles. They like to play with them. They like to use them. And then pretty soon the neighbor's doing it. It's like the easiest thing. And so who would have thought <laughs> that herbal sprinkles would have been the cultural influencer to, to have this like spread? But it's it's just, I again, I've heard from more people than any other modality. You know, I think there's 14, rest, 14 chapters any other than any of the other techniques in any other chapters, the sprinkles are what all the moms and families say are like, wow, this really changed our kitchen culture. Um, and so, yeah, it's so I have the sprinkles on the table. Then I also have another kind of area right next to where I'm cooking that I've got like three herbal vinegars, three herbal oils, right? So that those oils and vinegars can go into soups and salads and stews and dressings and marinades. And, you know, you can sprinkle them on your quinoa. Your, they just add, you've got the flavor of the and the medicinal value of the herb already infused into your herbal oil and vinegar. And then it just goes on. It just, it just spreads throughout every meal. Right. And then I have, um, then I have a little rack where I have all of the spices that I use in my cooking. So it's not just like everywhere because my husband, he's a little bit more, I don't know, he's neater than I am and he doesn't want bottles all over the kitchen. <laughs> So I've had to get it. So it's organized. <laughs> so oh, but the, that sounds the, awesome. the, the goal, you know, is to 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 get your herbs in a way that they're easy to use, you know, so to get your herbal kitchen set up so that you're herbal ready, what I call herbal ready. You don't have to think about it. It's like, yeah, a dash of vinegar. You're going to use oil anyway in, pro, in pretty much every every meal. You're going to use an herbal, you know, so you've got your sprinkles, your oils, your herbs, your honeys, and your ghee, and they're just that you're herbal ready for any meal. And so any meal that you, any food that you eat, even if it's not the home cooked, organic, best from scratch, local grown, whatever, even if it's like, you know, takeout, right? Because we all don't eat perfect all the time. Even if you're eating takeout or something that's a little bit, you know, okay, <laughs> um, you can add these condiments, these herbal condiments, and it will up the nutritional, you know, it will just make even the not perfect food better. And so my goal is to get your pantry filled with herbal condiments that, that make every meal a little bit better. And truly it's, you know, it's the best health care prevention around is what you've got in your kitchen and what you put on your food. You know, an herbal lifestyle is, um, I don't know, it's as good of a proactive, you know, good as a healthcare plan as anything really that we can do to support our health, you know? Absolutely. Um, I think too about how like one of the big issues facing people today and health wise is that we don't get enough variety of micronutrients in our diets, you know, especially people really eating the standard American diet, um, you know, they're mostly consuming corn, a lot of potatoes, a lot of wheat, um, the same foods processed over and over again into things that look and taste differently because they're flavored differently. And so what we're missing is all these little micronutrients. And those tend to have like the antioxidants and a lot of those other nutrients that we need so much. And it can also feel overwhelming, especially for people who have always been eating the standard American diet to suddenly start bringing in like a huge variety of vegetables and they might not know how to cook them all. And it just seems like not even worth starting. So this is such a good way to bring in a vast diversity of different micronutrients, chemical constituents, and medicinal components into what you're eating every single day. 
Yeah, you're 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 right. You're right. It adds a level of diversity that you don't even have to think about, and it it helps with digestion of every meal. You know, all of these, all your kitchen herbs and spices help with digestion, and um, it really just ups the nutritional value of whatever you're eating. And you know, that whole diversity thing that you're talking about is so true. And then, like having digestion supported is so fundamental also you know if you're not digesting your food well then you're not as vital and fully healthy as you could be and um, so most of these herbs and spices would fit under the category of carminatives which we talked about in my recent interview with Anya Robinson Um, and so carminatives taste good and they help to digest the food and like I remember that this just came to me you telling us that sage helps you digest fat and so you said always sprinkle powdered sage on your popcorn you can like infuse it in the butter beforehand if you want and that will help you to digest all the butter while you're eating the popcorn Mm -hmm. yeah so I have a couple little sayings uh carminative with every meal Mm. (laughs) so I've got my family train I'm like where's the carminative carminative at every meal you know my husband's been taking over some of the cooking a little bit more and I'm like carminative at every meal (laughs) and so now he's like oh I got the carminative you know so there's you can just say carminative at every meal where's the carminative and we say um also digest it right right spice it nice digest it right right so it's got to be spiced and I'm not talking about hot hot spices but you're the the herbal kitchen is really steeped in the value of carminatives and how carminatives help increase the flow of blood, energy, and oxygen to your digestive tract at every meal. And the thing is, is that digesting your food is hard work. It's it takes a lot of energy. And your kitchen spices that you know are not just there for flavor. They are there, they are the bridge to optimum nutrition. And if you're not using carminatives and herbs and spices in your food, you are not digesting your food as well. And, you know, again, all those herbs and spices that are that are in your kitchen cabinet. Sure, they help with flavor. Yeah. You know, but that's not why they're really there. They're there because they help you to digest your food. And without them, it takes just a lot more work to, to you know, it takes more energy. And, and what it shakes out to be is that at the end of the day, you spent your energy on digestion and not, you know, doing your podcast. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so carminative at every meal, you know, and so health is not just about cooking healthy food. It's about preparing meals that are laden with herbs and spices, right? They're, they're, um, and that's, that is really um, you know, that's the value of kitchen medicine. It's like you turn life into you and the herbs are there to help you. I mean, it's a miracle. You know, we turn, you know, the plants and the animals transform sunlight into themselves and then we take it and turn, take them, you know, the gift of them and turn it into ourselves. I mean, think about it, <laughs> but the herbs, um, you know, they really help us. That's the value of culinary herbalism, kitchen medicine, is that at every single meal, you are being helped um, to create yourself, to recreate yourself. And you're, if you're not doing that at every meal, you're not getting the nutritional value, you know, from whatever food you're eating. So it makes me think too, you know, if, um, if all that energy is going into digesting your food, that that's getting taken away from your brain. Like that is brain power being lost after every meal. We've all experienced that, you know, that's like a very instinctive situation that's going on. Um, And I I mean, for me, that's not something I want, you know, I really want to be like fully focused and fully empowered in my own mind at all times. And um, focusing on gut health is such a easy way to do that. Yeah. I mean, we've all had that experience of just, you know, not eating the right thing, um, or, you know, eating too much at a feast and just like, oh my gosh, I want to take a nap. Right. And so if we, and and also when it comes to healing, we know that helping with digestion is one of the best things we can do. That's why every tradition in the world talks about eating lightly when you're not feeling well, or when you're dealing with an illness is because to free up the digestive energy, then your body has the capacity to heal, to, to, to go to the brain, to go to creating hormones, wherever you, wherever you need it. Right. And so if we know that um, freeing up digestion is the best thing for healing, why not uh, do it every day? (laughs) 
Yeah. Well, why not really support our digestion every single day and not just when we're not feeling well? Yes. Yes. Uh, something I really yeah. love about this book is that, like, I'm looking at the herbal sprinkles and salts chapter right now because we were just talking about that. But I know you do the, I think you do this in most chapters. I remember the pesto chapter. Um, you have a great intro, first of all. I really encourage people to read, like, all of the words in the book and not just the recipes because there's so much wisdom in all of them. But then you give, at the beginning of the chapter, after the intro, uh, like, sort of a basic outline of just in general, yeah. this is how to put together herbal sprinkles and salts. This is a basic pesto recipe. And then once people have that down, which again, they are so incredibly simple, um, then they can get into playing and adding different ingredients and experimenting more. So that to me is so valuable just to have this framework of this is in general how you're going to make an herbal salt, an herbal sprinkle, an herbal pesto, an herbal ghee, an herbal honey. And then let's move into playing with it, um, looking like narrowing down by the flavor profile that you want or by which ailment you're hoping to address. You have like anti-inflammatory uh, ghee in here and after dinner seed chew, um, which is carminatives, right? Uh so I just, I like how you give that foundation at the beginning of each chapter and then go into details and specifics. Yeah. I mean, it, you're right. It's, it's good. There's the, the bases are all there. I mean, and then there's a lifetime of so many recipes, but really the goal is not to follow the recipes. Um, it's like, my book is just full of scribbles of like, oh, I added this this time, or oh, I tried this, or people didn't like this, you know, it's, I mean, I need a new book. <laughs> but it's, it's like, you're, 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 you're putting it out there, you're putting this palette out there. And then your family and your kids and your community can, you know, there's a, a scent and texture and flavor scape that's just out there. And you're, you're creating this environment that it's, it normalizes it. It's like, oh, this is normal. This is what we do. And so then they can choose the scentscape that they like, or they're like, oh, I like this texture. And they get to paint a painting and, and they figure out what it is that they like. And so then, you know, when you start doing that and you start having carminative at every meal, you know, you go traveling or you know, although when you travel, you should carry a three seed ch um, chew with you, take it with you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um and you don't do it for a while, you will notice, you will absolutely notice the shift in your energy in like a little bit more tired, a little, you know, just like a, a, when you don't get that carminative digestive help that you get when your herbal pantry and your herbal kitchen is set up and herbal ready, you when people start getting it, they, they notice when it's not there. Wow. Um, I'm going to give some examples. You have a love your liver sprinkle. You say sprinkle this nourishing mixture into smoothies and salad dressings and then orange spice sprinkle. So this is one where it's more focused on the flavor. This sprinkle is delicious in homemade applesauce or add it to pureed fruits when making fruit leather in a dehydrator. So that's another thing too, is like every time I'm looking at a recipe, I'm like, oh, I could make that. Oh, that's easy. Oh, we, we never make that. It, it's just like super inspiring. Yeah. 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 And it's, um, <clears throat> you know, it's so wonderful to just think about how this is so simple at every meal. And then what happens in your kitchen, the herbs you use in your food, it's what it's what is the foundation. I mean, cultures and health begins in the kitchen. And this is one of the quickest ways in, you know, I mean, there's like lots of health tips right now, right? Mm, overwhelming. <laughs> this and this and this and this is like, oh my gosh, you know, but this is something that right away you can start living more in line with the health goals that you're wanting to create because it's just very simple. It's at every meal and you can get set up within like, you know, a very short amount of time so that it can just happen at every meal and you don't have to think about it. And then when you, again, like I was talking about, this is what transforms our culture. This is this, you know, it's like, you know, when people would come to herb classes like 20 years ago, they would say, well, can I get a job doing this? Is there, is there a degree in this? And it's like, no, there's no board. There's no certificate. There's no licensing. There's no nothing. 
And but yet everybody kept doing it. There is a cultural transformation happening in the kitchens that's pushing, you know, to to for us to evolve to the next level with our medical care. And people like you, you know, visionary, you know, leaders and, and influencers that, you know, your visionary medicine making that you do. Right. That is, you know, you are you have helped your entire community be able to take that next step and that next step it crosses all levels it's like each meal i feel better you know mike it's one of the easiest ways for your kids or the young ones to learn because they just if they don't even know they're being indoctrinated you know it's just like oh it's verbal sprinkle but it's a great way it's one of the best ways to get them on board learning and they don't even know they're learning And then it spreads just like a good recipe. Don't you always want to know? So that it spreads like that. And then eventually we reach a critical mass. And it's when that we get to that critical mass and then boom, the culture like evolves to the next step. And again, you know, visionary, just influencer. I mean, you're an amazing medicine maker. You, you know, you had the vision to just start doing this and providing this for your community. And now it forges change. So it, it it's like, you know, this is the fire. This is the big why. This is why I wrote this book. You know, it's truly a holistic, like it, it, it affects every level of what we're, of what we're trying to evolve into, to be healthier ourselves, our communities and the culture. So I'm a little bit passionate about it. <laughs> As you can tell, <laughs> I love it. I love what you said about. Um, I'm, I'm tired of seeing people around me not having holistic, integrative medical care uh-huh. when they're getting sick. Like, and our, what we do in the kitchen is changing that. I, I think the preventative aspect of it cannot be overstated too. If you're just getting like oregano, rosemary, cumin, you know, so many of these simple herbs into your um, body every day, you're so much less likely to even come down with the cold, the flu, because these are all highly antimicrobial plants. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the prevention is, it, it, it's just undeniable. You know, you're, you've got all these antimicrobial herbs that are in your oil, in your vinegar, in your ghee, in your, you know, on the table and you are getting, it's, it's the best. I I mean, it's incredible prevention. You don't even know what, what colds you're going to prevent yourself. And I've had so many moms and families tell me that, you know, once they started, once they really got these basics in their herbal kitchen that, wow, what happened to the cold every year that, you know, the round of colds Mm -hmm. just, they're just gone right? Because getting this level of digestive support and antimicrobial support at every meal. And then going back to the digestive support too, with autoimmune issues being, you know, the new plague upon the earth, if we can like keep the gut healthy from the get go, how, how much of that could be prevented? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're dealing with, you know, the results of 40s medicine, generational antibiotic abuse, and we've all been on meds, you know, so we all, we all need gut healing, like a, pretty much everybody yeah. needs gut healing. That's why it's the but yeah, that's why it's the big topic, because the big topic right now, because we are all dealing with gut inflammation. And even if we do eat perfect, and we've never been on any drugs, which my son, by the way, 14 years old, never been on antibiotics. I am like, I'm going to, I'm putting a, putting a medal on my shirt right now, <laughs> but it doesn't matter. You know, he's starting to eat more, you know, he's still getting the glycophosphates. He's still getting the pesticides and the chemicals just that are, that are swimming all around us. Our guts are being affected. And so to have this gut support plate, you know, in place in your kitchen, you know, it's, it's, um, it's why we're reclaiming this heart, this, this home art, you know, and, and you and all the, all the kitchen herbalists, you know, we're building this bridge for all of us to put this back in place again. Yeah. And going back to talking about kids and my oldest was 12 and it's hard to get her to eat good food at this point. Um, she is pretty easy when she was younger, but especially cause she spends half her time with her dad and they eat differently. It's just hard to get her to eat. Like I used to be able to. So this is such a simple way. Um, like you say, to get those little nutrients into her. 
Um, yeah, you can, you can find a, you know, a sprinkle that she wants to make and that she likes and she can make herself. Yes. You know? Yeah. And she loves baking. She's a huge baker. So I think that some of these honeys and some of your like uh, more sweet ideas would be fun for her to play with. The sprinkles are great for baking. You can make all these. I have several sprinkles. There's, you can make baking sprinkles, you know, that are just really, really fun. So yeah, she's going to have to, you know, at that age they do, they got to pick it up themselves. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, can we talk pesto? Because pesto is one of my joys in life. And <laughs> um, after I interviewed you last summer, I got your book down off my shelf and ended up diving deep into the pesto chapter and was so, so inspired. And I love you wrote, pesto is more than a condiment in my kitchen. It is its own food group in our house. It holds a place as sacred as the elements. There is earth, water, fire, air, and pesto. <laughs> It's true. It's so true. And then you point out that it's a highly medicinal food comprised of several servings of vegetables, loads of antioxidants, and a plethora of antimicrobial properties. Um, and you talk about, you know, expanding beyond basil also. So yeah, just tell us about how you use pesto in your family. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Pesto. You know, I make up what I do is I make up a batch at the beginning of the week and it, it goes on kind of everything. We use it instead of mayonnaise on our bread. It's amazing on any kind of egg dish. You can, you know, like, especially like you have a leftover, like you have that leftover quinoa dish or you have that leftover rice dish or whatever. And you're like, oh, I'm kind of bored, <laughs> but then you put the pesto in it and you're like, oh, okay, this is good. <laughs> and it, so it makes kind of boring things better. And it just, it just adds so much flavor to, you can put a dollop in your soup and it, it can be the basis of your salad dressing. So you can take three tablespoons of pesto and just put olive oil and vinegar. And then now you have like the best salad dressing ever, right? So it, yeah. it's just so many places to use it. <laughs> and again, I just want to say, so you give the basic pesto recipe and it's, um, and you know, I like how you have cups and grams too. It's so hard when cookbooks only do the one that you like aren't familiar with. Um, <laughs> so, you know, you have the olive oil, leafy greens, fresh savory herbs, nuts or seeds, uh, garlic and salt, but then you have all these variations listed underneath. I'll just read a few edible flowers, sun-dried tomato, Greek olives, capers, balsamic vinegar, fresh grated ginger, which we did and was so good horseradish jalapeno and so I can just open to this page when I'm ready to make my pesto and be like oh I'm gonna do that one today let's do this one mm -hmm. and then of course you get into all of your recipes like arugula pumpkin seed pesto cilantro pesto pesto picante rosemary pesto flower pesto oh my gosh it's just so I want it all <laughs> <sighs> I want my basil to grow. Oh yeah. So like what, um, and so you use beyond basil, you will just use like, yeah, arugula or a leafy green. And this is a way to get more leafy greens into your family. Yeah. Arugula, cilantro, parsley. Um, I, those are some really, but I'll, I'll also use just like a lettuce mix or, um, spinach, you know, and if you, and then there's just all kinds of like sorrel is really nice in there and you can put in, um, sprouts, you know, like anything green, you know, and then you can always add like a, like an eighth a cup of, you know, your dense, you know, you don't put all like, you just put a, like, yeah, like about two, um, two or three tablespoons of like sage, rosemary, thyme, you know, the more dense herbs, you know, the more uh, aromatic flavor dense, yeah, flavor dense herbs, more intense herbs. So you can throw your rosemary, your sage, your thyme, all of that can go in there too. Chives. I love chives in, in pesto it just adds this whole dimension of, you know, spicy, pungent, uh, I love chives in pesto and oregano. Oregano is amazing in pesto. So you can just make sure you always, you know, in the, in the most, you know, you, again, it's usually basil, but you, there's all these other herbs that you can add also that just, oh, I love pesto. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, going back to the senses too, like I think so many of us growing up eating processed food have kind of a, like a flat palate. 
uh, it's hard to distinguish flavors, you know, and I think that I can imagine that the more you cook like this, the more this like sensory wonderland opens up. And um, I think that really is also just something that can connect us to our ancestors and like remembering what it is to be human upon the earth and to be able to differentiate minutia, minute changes in flavor and scent. Yeah, that that's good. And also knowing what you want. So one of the things I mean, I was you know, my dad was a diver, my grandparents and my dad, they were divers and they were uh, fisher people and they were foragers and they were gardeners. And we ate a ton of Spam, Velveeta, Pop-Tarts, TV dinners. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But we would go to the Rainbow Bread outlet once a month. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. There was an outlet where you could get rain, where you could get um, Hostess and Rainbow like half price, and we would like stock up on that crap. So I had it all, but (laughs) I have a flavor for all of it, right? But (laughs) oh my god, I'm still suffering from that. (laughs) Still working out those those ho hos, you know. (laughs) But it's you know since I started you know working with herbal medicine. You know, at first it was like bitter, ugh, yuck. But now if I don't have bitter, you know, I, I crave it. My body craves it. I can feel it. My bowel movements aren't as good. Um, you know, it's like, oh, I have a bitter. I, I can tell when I need more bitter flavor, when I need to like, you know, get that liver squirting, get that gallbladder squ- squirting and just digest my food better. So it also, it, you over time you go, oh yeah, I need this flavor. And, you know, if you feel like you're, I don't know, if you're in a a rut and you feel like your meals could use a little more something, you know, um, or maybe you're not inspired to use herbal herbs every day in your food, that's the the beauty of kitchen herbalism and having your pantry and all these condiments filled with herbs already. You don't have, you, you only have to make them once every six months or even once a year sometimes. And then they're just... You know, you're ready to like do all these things and support all these levels from the very personal to to planetary, really. Um, how do you incorporate the bitter flavor and what what does it do for your digestion and your liver? Well, di- the bitter flavor, when you taste something bitter, when you taste that bitter flavor, um, the body you and you have that in your mouth, the saliva actually reads it and the, it sends the message to squirt. <laughs> to get to get things ready to digest to have your all the the cascade of digestive enzymes and that are needed to digest your food and so that bitter flavor that's why we have aperitifs and bitter greens before our meal <clears throat> is to prime the pump is to prime the digestive tract to have all the support of all the digestive enzymes and um, things that we need to digest our food that, so that it's happening so that it's awake and it's it um, the bitter flavor increases the rate at which your your gallbladder and liver um, produce and secrete bile, and bile is what you need to um, digest fat. So the fattier the meal, you know, a little bit more bitter green before you know before you eat a lot of fat. And is bitter greens the main way that you use bitters? Yeah, so bitters, um, you know, you can get your dandelion, um, arugula has some bitter flavor. And also the, uh, you know, your apple cider vinegar does that also it has that kind of bitter pungent flavor. So a little bit of your um, vinegar in your salad dressing also does that has that same function. Um, I really love making a mugwort oximel. So that's yes, where mugwort. I, yeah, yes. mugwort's yes. bitter. I put that mm-hmm. in the vinegar and then I add a little bit of honey. So I want to ask you about this because- You are such a good medicine maker. Oh, I love thanks, that. Cammie. <laughs> but I had oh. another herbalist kind of, um, I don't know, you know, uh, come after me about having honey in my bitter. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, it's a really small amount of honey just to like, you know- r- soften, (laughs) soften that vinegar with bitter in it. Um, And my understanding is that as long as you taste the bitter, it works in your body. 
Yeah, you just want to taste that flavor, you know. And I mean, look at some of the uh, the, the drinks. Look at all the 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 bitter aperitifs like the, the, that comes from France. They're not just like slamming you with bitter. There's all these other like sweet and um, musty and woody flavors. It's not you don't only need bitter, right? right. But as long as you can taste the bitter through that, then um, then yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you for proving me right. <laughs> well, you know, and we're just, it's like, we just, you know, we grab onto one concept and say it's, that's the way. And so, yeah, anyway. Yeah. And man, I do feel so much better when I'm taking a little bit of that uh, mugwort ox smell every day. I, I got to get that back into my life. <laughs> it's um. So, you know, I'm really thinking like I, I get into my things that I'm doing and then I fall out of them all the time, especially right now with a two-year-old. Because um, as soon as I step in the kitchen, she's like, I want raisins, <laughs> you know, and like, I just have no space to think about anything or do anything. Mm-hmm. Um but even in general, I tend to be like that. But this system that you have going in your own kitchen of just having it all around, having a ton of options and having it right there on the counter um, is such a smart way to make sure you're really getting this stuff into your body every day. Yeah, it's a simple way into, you know, just turning into what you have in your cabinet already. I mean, pretty you know, again, when I wrote this book, it was my whole meditation on what was I going to write about is I wanted to, to the easiest way in for the most people. You know, I saw the complication. I saw what was happening. And I was like, OK, what is the easiest way in for the most people possible? Because I'm ready for a shift in this culture and I want it to happen, you know. And so that's the intention that the Herbal Kitchen was born out of. And when you start, you know, you just take what you've already got in your spice rack and, what, you know, the oil, the the vinegar, the the honey, the whatever you already got. And you make these condiments so that they're on your table, so that your kids use them, so that they're ready to put be put in those cookies that they want to bake. You know, um, you're you're herbal ready. You're you you can just start. It's just it just happens. Even if you're tired, even if the kids are, you know, it's. I've been there. I know what that's like. I know what it's like to go in at three o'clock in the afternoon and be like, oh my god, I have to come up with a meal now, a healthy meal. Uh, you know, and so you start with like, okay, wow, well, I've got this vinegar and oil, at least the salad dressing is going to be super healthy. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah, or like one of my go to dinners when we're so tired or have very little time. It's so simple, but I love it is um, just a little bit of white rice with like runny eggs on top and maybe greens or cheese depending on what we have. But that like basically every recipe in here would enhance that super oh, simple yeah. meal. You put sprinkle on top of that. You drizzle that with some culinary, you know, you put a little um, alchemy oil on that. That's one of the, you know, so there's a few recipes in the book that I've gotten so much feedback that are like, Oh my God, that's the best. So you put, you make some of the alchemy oil that's in the um, herbal oil section and yeah, it just tra- takes it to a whole nother level. <laughs> mm, yeah. What, what other recipes are superstars? Uh, superstar is definitely the chai honey is a superstar. There's a lot of honeys that are superstar. Mm-hmm. Um, and the uh, alchemy oil is, uh, I think I've gotten between that and the chai honey, the most uh, feedback from, but also the lemonades, like the lemon verbena lemonade and the herbal lemonade. That's mm-hmm. also one of those kind of key logs that can transform like a party, a, a, a birthday party, a school gathering, you know, it has the potential of really reaching a lot of people and having a big impact because you're changing what people drink. You know, you get rid of that ice chest of like whatever after the soccer game and you bring some herbal lemonade and now you've got 30 people going, wow, what's mm. that? <laughs> Yum. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna make this chai honey once we hang up. Um, I have made your cinnamon ginger honey consistently for the last 12 years and absolutely love it. You know, it's just something in my family like cinnamon ginger honey. Yeah. Um, and okay, so I wanna talk about cordials too because I know there's this whole revival of like cocktails and stuff nowadays, but in general, I think we can say this is a somewhat uh, forgotten 
category of nourishment and deliciousness. And I want to read a little bit about what you wrote. You say, learn how to make herbal cordials and you will always have the most interesting parties. People stop (laughs) asking you to bring food to the potluck and request that you bring drinks instead. I make True. several I make several cordials each season, so there is always one around for when we are invited to a gathering. I love that. Um, I we had a Thanksgiving party years and years ago, and my partner made this amazing meal, amazing turkey. He was this phenomenal cook, and everyone was like dying over all the food. And then I had made a cordial based on what I learned from you. And I don't even, I God, I wish I had written down the recipe. People write down your experiments, but I brought it out afterwards, and I just people were like dying <laughs> over it, and that felt so good to me as someone who really had no kitchen skills at all at that time and was like I'm just the one who stands here while he makes the amazing food to have people be like this is amazing (laughs) and it's hard to mess up a cordial I would think you know (laughs) yeah yeah you can you know and the thing about cordials you don't have to drink a lot even if you know cordial glasses are like a half an ounce you know and you just have that little sip and it's a special occasion and it's herbal and it's you know, it's just, you, you can make seasonal cordials with whatever fruit you have access to. There's so many variations. And what what I do often is I, I do, I make seeds, like I'll make a, um, a, a summer harvest cordial, or I'll make um, a winter holiday, winter solstice cordial, or I, many times I've made cordials for um, special occasions. Like when people are getting married, I'll make a cordial for their wedding. That, you know, a lot that everybody gets this cordial that is just, you know, it was made just for that occasion. And that has, that has been really, that's been an amazing experience. Wow. And um, here at the beginning, you break it down that there are just four ingredients in a cordial. There's drinking alcohol of choice, fresh or dried herbs, fresh or dried fruit, and a sweetener. And so there again, there's just our foundational recipe and you can build off of that. Yeah, you can take that so many different ways. Yep. Yum. Yeah, summer berry cordial, Christmas cordial, sunshine cordial, chamomile cordial. Oh, my goodness. (laughs) Rose cardamom cordial. Mm. (laughs) Okay. I'm so glad we're having this conversation. (laughs) Um, And then a part of the book that we haven't talked about yet is at the beginning, you have Materia Medica for 50 medicinal cooking kitchen herbs. Mm -hmm. So you break down common name, botanical name, parts used, gardening tips, properties and uses and projects, um, you know, things you can put these in in the kitchen. And so this is super valuable. I mean, people write, this could be a whole book in itself. (laughs) Yeah. this beginning chapter. Um, and it's just, I often come to this when I want, I'm like, wait, what is, what is time doing for me again? You know, what, what's all, what's time all about? Gosh, time has so many yummy properties. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah. Go ahead. I'm, I, now I'm zoning on your time, uh, writings here. It's, it's, and you know, it's not big, long, extensive materia medica. It's really like quick snapshot. Like here's three things, you know, there, it's not, it, again, this was meant to be like reference and here's how you get started. And then here's how you can take the, here's what you can add on to experiment. Um, and so the materia medica, the 50 herbs, common herbs and spices, it's really, you know, again, it's, an, it's a, you don't have to read a whole chapter or 15 pages. It's like, quick snapshot of like what what you can get out of this yeah and so this is talking about like time improves all problems associated with the lungs and throat time is full of minerals and trace minerals including iron time is a great culinary herb that can be added to many savory foods Um, I love time so much I think I think I must have learned this from you I've made a thyme honey uh, like once a year in the winter time and oh it's so good so yes. yummy and we use it whenever there's yeah a respiratory problem in the family yeah thyme honey is good <laughs> what like what what's your favorite herb cami um oh, which, which which of these do you really tend to use a lot which herbs yes in your kitchen 
Well, the, all these 50 right here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I just cannot answer that question. I know, it's, I know. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, it's like, oh, what, at the begin- so what I do is at the beginning of the week, you know, like I have some organization time on Sunday and I just kind of take a few moments and I go, okay, what's happening with me? Hmm. <clears throat> you know, oh, okay, I've been writing a lot. So I just need help with like circulation and, you know, keep things moving and okay, what's happening with my son? Oh, he's just been overheated. You know, and I just look at the people that I live with and I go, okay, what's, what's, and I just take a snapshot and, and then I create from there, you know, I'll set up some tea blends or um, I'll, you know, pull some things out that I'm like, okay, this is what would be good for the week. So again, so it's not three o'clock every afternoon, you're going, oh, what do I need to do? You know, and just taking even like 15 minutes of organization time and and because the choices are endless. I mean, how many supplements do you have like sitting in your shelf that you never take, right? So you you have to kind of at each week or each every couple weeks just go, okay, what are we what are the five or seven or three herbs that we're gonna do for the, this week or the next couple weeks and pull them out and put them on the shelf. So that's what I do. That's so, so brilliant, Cami. I just I admire you so much. I went to a really amazing um like family meal planning course Mm -hmm. that a friend did a few months ago and it was great and we've really implemented it. But like to add the level of what you're talking about into that meal planning moment of what's going on with us, what might we need this week? Um, Like I'm thinking, especially when we get into the end of summer here in California and it's so dry and it's so hot and the wildfire threat is everywhere and there might be smoke in the air from a nearby fire. Like, that for me, I'm always like, uh, what do I do? I didn't plan for this. Um, like I know I could be supporting my body and my family's bodies nutritionally right now better for what's going on, but I didn't plan for it. And now I'm like, what do I do? Um, so I'm absolutely going to start doing that. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's like, what's happening with us, what the season is, what's, yeah, you just take, yeah, it's part of that. It just takes a little bit of planning so you don't have to make the decision every day. That's where we fall down. It's like, I, I just can't think about that every day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Especially when you're a super busy person, as we all are, just a little bit of planning can make such a big difference. Um, okay, so this is the, you are re-releasing this book. It's got a new cover. Tell us about um Tell us about your life with this book and what's happening right now with this re-release and like what you are offering for pre-sales. Yeah. So, you know, the publisher contacted me and said, you know, most, most books go out of print after 10 years, but for some reason your book's doing really well. It's a 10 year anniversary. Let's re-release it. So I wrote a new chapter. There's new, there's even more than 250 recipes now and a new forward and a new cover and there's color on the inside now. And I'm really I'm actually really proud of it. And I think the upgrade is just going to be really nice. And so even if you already have the old herbal kitchen, the new one is, it's just going to be so pretty and there's going to be new recipes. And so it's um, what I, the thing is, is that we're, we're in the pre-order period. So the book is actually not out yet, but the pre-order period, it's funny, is so important for people for the support and the longevity and the message of the book to get out for people to pre-order. And what happens is that bookstores do not pick up your book if they're, the pre-orders aren't good. So we are in pre-order fa- phase right now, which means you pay for the book and then you don't get it for another month or two or uh, five weeks. But I, what I've done is create like I've created a, a really good bonus package to encourage people to pre-order the Herbal Kitchen. Um, and so one of the things that you, when you um, pre-order the Herbal Kitchen, just only during this period, only during this pre-order period, I've created an entire another ebook on herbal pesto called Pesto for All Seasons. And I have, four, I think, 14 new pesto recipes that I've created since the book. So the pesto is just going to get even better. (laughs) I'm so glad I asked about it. (laughs) And then the other bonus that I created is called the turmeric sessions, because right now turmeric is kind of the most, the herb that I'm getting, that I get the most questions about. And so I created a whole um, video course on turmeric, um, I think there are 12 video lessons in there where I, t- I walk you through all of my favorite recipes for um, using turmeric, but also I talk about how to use turmeric 
turmeric has contraindications. It's not for everybody all the time. And I have seen lots of people make themselves kind of sick with taking turmeric in the wrong way. And so I talk about that in this. I just like to answer all the turmeric questions that I've gotten in the last five years in this video course so people can feel really comfortable with turmeric. And so that bonus is, I mean, that bonus is worth more than the book, you know, it's, it's really kind of a no brainer. So you're going to get, um, the um, pesto for all seasons. You're going to get the turmeric sessions. I'm doing a whole nother workshop on kitchen medicine that you get access to. And then, you know, when you said earlier, <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, capture your recipe. Well, that's, I've seen that. So what I've done is I've created all these recipe cards that that's that fit into the herbal kitchen so that you can keep track of what you do. So there's just a lot of gifts that I've created to say thank you for anybody that helps me during this um, pre-order period, which is really, it kind of makes or breaks your book. And, and its ability to get out there and the ability of the message that I'm really trying to bring with, with bringing this book into the world. So, Oh, well, that all sounds so amazing. And I can't wait to uh, read, watch, listen, and intake all of your, your kitchen wisdom. And um, so I'll have a link, of course, in the show notes to take people to your website where they can pre-order and access those bonuses. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Thank you so much, Cammie. This has been absolutely wonderful. I'm so inspired to get in the kitchen, which is very rare for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And <clears throat> so that that's the point is to, is, you know, it's not just about having recipes. It's about how it's about being inspired. It's about being inspired. You know, it, it's, it's um, having strength and inspiration that really, has us be able to carry on nourishing ourselves and our families. And so, yeah, it's just, the, I think there's just a powerful cultural shifting ability of kitchen medicine, of, of herbal kitchen medicine in, in everyone's herbal kitchen. And so I was just, I'm very grateful to be on this path and to be here talking with you right now about this. Mm, well, you're, I, I can't say enough about, how much I value your teachings and just who you are and what you have brought into my life and the lives of my listeners. So thank you so much, Cammie. Oh, Amber, thank you. I'm so grateful. Thank you for taking these medicine stories in. I hope they inspire you to keep walking the mythic path of your own unfolding self. I love sharing information and will always put any relevant links in the show notes. You can find my blog, Handmade Herbal Medicines, past podcast episodes, and a lot more at mythicmedicine.love. While you're there, I invite you to click the purple banner across the top of the page to take my quiz, Which Healing Herb Is Your Plant Familiar? It's a fun and lighthearted quiz, but the results are really in-depth and designed to bring you into closer alignment with the medicine that you're in need of. If you love the show, please consider supporting my work at patreon.com slash medicine stories. There's some killer rewards there, um, exclusive content, access to online courses, free, beautiful, downloadable ebooks, coupon codes, giveaways, and just amazing gifts provided by past guests of the podcast. All of that stuff is at the $2 a month level. Um, for a little more, you can access my herbal ebook or my small online course. And that's all there as a thank you, a huge thank you from me and from my guests for listening, for supporting this work. I love figuring out what I can give to people on Patreon. It's so fun. And I love that Patreon makes it that you can um, contribute for such a small amount a month. I'm a crazy busy and overwhelmed mom and adding this project into my life has been a questionable move for sure, but I love doing it and I love the feedback that I get from you all and I just pray that the Patreon continues to allow me the financial wiggle room to keep on doing it while giving back to everyone who's listening um, if you're unable to do that, or if you'd like to support further, I would love it if you would subscribe 
on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. And if you would review the podcast on iTunes too, really helps get it into other ears. And it means so much to me when I read those reviews. It's um like the highlight of my week when I check them and see new ones. And people are amazing. You guys are wonderful. Thank you so much. The music that opens and closes the show is by Marie Sue, M-A-R-I-E-E. S-I-O-U-X. It's from her song Wild Eyes, which is one of my favorite songs of all time. Thank you so much, and I look forward to you next time.